In this series, we show you everything you need to build your very own algorithmic trading bot on MetaTrader. In this episode, you'll learn exactly how to build your very own EMA indicator. Before we get into how to build your own EMA indicator, there's a few things that you need to have completed beforehand. Now, all of these things I've covered in previous episodes. So if you do need to know how to do that, just head back to the channel and I'll show you how to do it. So the things that you're gonna need are a connection to MetaTrader 5 in order to get the data. You need the ability to be able to download that data into your Python script. And finally, you need to know how to turn that data into a data frame. When all of that's completed, I'll throw you over to Brad, who'll talk a little bit about what an EMA indicator is and how it's used. Hey guys, Brad here from algoquant.trade. Today we're going to be starting a series on how we create an indicator for MT4 or MT5 using Python. Um, today's episode, we're actually going to be uh, using the well-known exponential moving average um, to keep it simple. And then later on, we can get into more complex and combined uh, different indicators and make your own. So the exponential moving average, also known as the EMA, calculates the average value of the previous trades with a multiplier applied to the most recent trade. The addition of the multiplier weighs the most recent trades to have a greater impact on the EMA value, making the EMA more sensitive to price movements. EMAs can be almost any value with the most popular ones being 200, 50, 10, and eight. This EMA we're gonna be calculating as follows. Today's email is equal to the price times the multiplier plus yesterday's EMA's price multiplied by one minus the multiplier. Because the current EMA value is conditional on the previous value when calculating an EMA from scratch, the very first EMA must be a simple moving average. This also means the EMA becomes more accurate over a large number of candles with a thousand candles typically is the minimum for a 200 EMA. Here we have the pseudocode. Before we hand back to James to show us how this is all built, first we'll calculate the initial SMA value. Next, we'll set up our function, go candle by candle through our data frame and calculate the next EMA value. Then we'll add a column to each row of our data frame for the EMA we're calculating. Thanks so much, Brad. All right, let's get coding. To get started, head back to your project and create a brand new Python file called indicator underscore lib dot pi. Now, for those of you who've been following this series, you'll know that we use the library or a pseudo library really, to be honest with you, uh, in order to make our code really, really easy to reuse and really conform to that dry principle of don't repeat yourself. Once you've created it, import numpy as np. Now, numpy, which is what numpy stands for, should have been imp uh, imported when you downloaded pandas and used pip install to do it. If not, as I put on the screen just before, just use pip install numpy to make sure that you've got it. Let's create the function. So I've called my function define calc underscore custom underscore EMA. Now, the reason for this is in other episodes, I'll show you how to use TA lib, which is way faster uh, in order to do this, but it is a little bit complicated to install. So for simplicity's sake, in this particular episode, we're just gonna do it ourselves. As I do with all of my functions, I've commented at the top exactly what this function is and how to use it. Um, once again, I'll just reiterate this for those who haven't heard this before. That really helps in a few months when you're heading back to see, you know, what you did and why you did it. Having that comment in there really will help you and save you a ton of time trying to figure it out. Okay, now this particular function accepts two uh, inputs. One is a data frame, which is the information, the candlestick data that you need to calculate the EMA. And the second one is the EMA size. Like I said, or as Brad mentioned, the EMA can really be any arbitrary size. And he did walk you through some of the most common ones. 
This function allows you to give it any value you want. So if you decide that you want an EMA9 because that's what your strategy needs, no problem. All you have to do is put in that EMA size is equal to nine and you're good to go. The function begins by creating a brand new column to add to your data frame that you gave it as an input. Now, the way that I've set this up means that you can just continue to use this function over and over again on a data frame adding a new EMA every single time. And that's gonna be really handy when we start getting into our EMA cross strategy in the next episode. Then we have the multiplier. Now, full disclosure here, typically the multiplier is two, which I've put in there, but you, know, you can use any value that you want. Just be aware that the more you change that value, the more you're changing the weighting of the EMA. The next thing we do is to create our simple moving average for the very, very first value. Like was mentioned uh, when Brad was going through the EMA, because of the nature of an EMA and how it's dependent on the previous value, the very first value does have to be an SMA. Luckily, Pandas data frames make this really, really easy to do. Okay, now we go through iterating our, through our data frame. Now, for those of you who are really into computation and want to make sure that your code is the fastest, I do want to be really, really clear. Now, iterating through a data frame row by row, the way that I've done it here, is really, really slow. It's one of the reasons why I recommend that you don't do more than a thousand rows for your data frame. Um, luckily, the TA lib function I go through in future uh, episodes is much faster but this at least allows you to understand how to unpack the EMA and how it's calculated. We then branch based upon whatever row we're on. So if the row is equal to the EMA size, so if you've put in for an EMA 200, once we get to row 200, it's gonna place in there the SMA value. Like I said, the very first value needing to be that SMA. Once we go past that EMA size, then it's going to use the previous value in order to calculate it. Now, what this does mean is that the EMA becomes more and more accurate over time. And in theory, if you want to get the most accurate EMA, you have to use all values that have ever been used for that candlestick. However, in practice, it's normally considered to be okay if you do it about five times the amount of the EMA that you want. So for an EMA 200, we're really aiming for a thousand rows. You can see here, I've set the variable EMA value to be equal to the formula that Brad explained earlier. Okay. The next row then sets the current row to be equal to the EMA value that we've just calculated. Okay, then we need to handle the values when we haven't quite reached our EMA just yet. So for that one, we just set the values to be 0, 0.00, which is a float, consistent with everything else that we've done so far. Finally, once the function has been completed, we return the value back to the user and that completes the function. Stay tuned to see how we use it in main.py. All right, let's head back to main.py and learn how to calculate a few different types of EMA. The first thing we wanna do in main.py is to import our library back into main. So import indicator underscore lib. Then we head back to our double underscore main double underscore and start to calculate our EMAs, pretty exciting. And we'll use these EMAs in the next episode where we start to talk about an EMA crossover strategy.
So let's go through it and you show, I'll show you a few different ways of looking into this. So the first one is we're going to change the number of candles that we're retrieving. Now you can keep 50,000 if you like, but my experience has been using this very slow iterative method. Um, that 50,000 will take a noticeable amount of time to calculate. So it may not be the best for testing. We'll start off by calculating an EMA 50, one right in the middle. It's as simple as passing it the candlestick starter frame that we got earlier and setting it the value 50. Then we print it to the screen. Look at that, we have an EMA 50. You can see there that the first few values are 0, 0.00 as we added, in this case, has added a few extra decimal places. And you can see the whole data frame there because of the pandas.set option uh, that we've got earlier in paint. Now we're going to have a look at the EMA 20. Now, if you're wondering to yourself, you know, hey, once we get going, I don't necessarily want to print the EMA to the screen all the time. The way to do that is just to remove the print statement, which I'll demonstrate here. So in this scenario, I've passed the EMA 50 back into the function to calculate an EMA 20. So we will have two different rows, uh, the EMA 50 and the EMA 20 going, but I haven't printed it to the screen. So you can't actually see it right now and that's really handy if you just want to show yourself one data frame right at the end with all of your emas calculated this is just to show you that you don't need to do it but to demonstrate that those values are there i'm just printing it to the screen now you'll see here that i've got the ema and the ema 50 and 20 sorry and you can see there that the values are different so that's just a really handy top tip for you finally now we're going to calculate the ema 200 Once again, uh, we pass it the EMA 20 data frame that we've just had. So that has now got a 50 and a 20 on it. And we pass it back into the function, the EMA size of 200. And we run it again. Look at that. So we've got all three values. They're all different. How good is that? In our next episode, Brad and I will show you how to calculate an EMA cross and turn it into a strategy.